Coming up on Mountain News this morning, the man accused of killing a former state representative's daughter during a home invasion is now in jail. And the search continues for an Eastern Kentucky man who went missing after a weekend car crash. Dedicated to Eastern and Southern Kentucky, this is WYMT Mountain News this morning. Good morning to you. It's Tuesday and it's 533 here. I'm Dakota May Chris. Thanks so much for waking up with us and Cameron. It is a cold start to the morning. Just like yesterday. I told Brandon yesterday morning. It's been so warm that I just have not given. I just forget to warm up my car now. Yeah, and now it's cold and I don't make the time for anything. I'm just yeah, you definitely up. need to warm the car up this morning yep. because many people are waking up to those temperatures below freezing this morning. And one location is Whitesburg. Let's take a look at that camera over at the Whitesburg camera. You can see right here we are sitting at 28 degrees. It also feels like 28 degrees as we are dry under that mostly clear sky this morning. Many people are below freezing like London and Somerset sitting at 30 degrees, 28 over in Irvine. The warm spot actually Jackson this morning sitting at 40 up there on the ridge. You can see here a pinpoint Doppler. Not much happening. We are dry and clear. A clean sweep this morning and that will continue to be the case as we go throughout the rest of today. A really nice day is on tap for your Tuesday. Mostly sunny and warmer. High temperatures topping out in those middle 60s and if you like the weather today then you will love the weather over the next few days. We got that full forecast coming up in just a little bit. All right, Cameron, thank you. Well, the search for the man accused of killing 32 year old Jordan Morgan has come to an end. Shannon Gilday was found and arrested early Monday morning. He was found walking along Barn Mills Road and taken into custody by the Madison County Sheriff's Office. Jeremy Toms has been following the investigation. Shannon Gilday took a short, silent walk to a KSP cruiser to be escorted to the Madison County Jail. Mr. Gilday, do you have anything you'd like to say? Gilday was found around 430 Monday morning, only a mile or so from the home on Willis Branch Road. He's accused of invading, but Hall says they don't believe he has been in Madison County throughout the course of this search. Just based on some information we have learned, um, obviously Mr. Gilday was located on foot in the area. Um, his vehicle was located elsewhere. KSP says the 23 year old Gilday forced his way into the home of Wesley Morgan last week injuring him and killing his daughter Jordan. The former state representative believed he had wounded Gilday that night, but Hall says that is not the case. No, the uh, Mr. Gilday was was not injured um, during the home invasion or the uh, uh, gunfire exchange with him and Mr. Morgan. Hall added that the Madison County Sheriff's Office was able to take Gilday into custody without incident, and they are grateful for that. We're just thankful for the community. Um, the people, um, other agencies, all the efforts and everyone just uh, remaining vigilant and uh, with with their help, you know, we were able to apprehend him and, you know, hopefully we're closer to bringing this to a resolve. Well, that was Jeremy Toms reporting. Gilday is facing multiple charges, including murder and first degree burglary. Jail officials now tell us he will be arraigned as early as today. Court documents show that bond was set at $2 million cash. A Whitley County man was arrested on Sunday night after police say he hit his niece with a truck. Christopher Mullins was arrested late Sunday. The citation says that Mullins's niece was walking behind his truck when he hit her, causing life threatening injuries. She then died of those injuries. The citation also said a field sobriety test was given to him and he was determined to be under the influence of marijuana. He was charged with first degree assault. And a man has died after being hit by a car last week. Laurel County Sheriff's deputies say 32 year old Kenneth Martin was hit by a car last Thursday on Kentucky 363, also known as Keevy Road. He was flown to the University of Tennessee Medical Center where he died. They say the driver of the car was not hurt Right now, it's not clear if any charges will be filed and the crash is still under investigation. The search continues for a missing Leslie County man that was in a car crash in Greasy Creek River Saturday evening. Now, deputies have not yet released the names of the missing man or the woman that was found at the scene of the crash. Monday night made the third night of searching and several community members and officials have pitched in to help. County members are out, local fire departments are out, uh, community members are out searching. Today, they will be joined by crews from other counties using river boats with sonar to scan the water in search of the missing man. 
Well, we are learning new information about a standoff situation that happened on Sunday in Pulaski County. We now know deputies arrested two people in the case. They say Devin Owens led them on a high speed pursuit. Owens stopped at Eastway Market. Well, that's when the passenger Clarence Lee got out. Now, he told deputies Owens handed him an AR-15 and told him to shoot at them. Lee says Owens had the rifle and two handguns in the car. Somerset police were called to quality in. That's where the standoff happened. Owens eventually came out. He is facing gun and drug charges. Lee was arrested on outstanding warrants. Coach Calipari is asking for prayers from Big Blue Nation. In a tweet, Cal said former Wildcat Tyler Ulis was involved in a car crash in Michigan. The Lexington Herald later reports Ulis suffered a broken ankle and other injuries. His father says Ulis was hit head on. He's expected to undergo surgery on his ankle Wednesday. Well, the, Dep the Department of Justice says Christopher Adam Cole of Knott County was a sentenced to 294 months in federal prison for charges related to two armed carjackings. Cole admitted to using a gun to sell a vehicle from one person back in August and a separate vehicle in September from a different person. Cole was assisted by Angela Granny Vanover of Perry County during the September carjacking. She pleaded guilty to aiding and abetting the carjacking and was also sentenced to 127 months in federal prison. Brandy Hurt of Perry County pleaded guilty to assisting Cole during the August carjacking and was previously sentenced to 67 months in prison. Well, whether it's IRS scams, publishers clearinghouse scams, or banking scams, scams are all around us and they are growing more popular as technology advances. WYMT's Alyssa Williams has more. In this day and age, imposter scams, or someone posing as something they are not in order to get money, are growing more prevalent. So scams come in all different forms. You really have to be cautious. LaDonna Coble with the Office of Senior Protection says whether it's via phone, email, or any other means of communication, scammers follow trends. If gas prices and utility costs are increasing, scammers will pose as those companies to get your money. Scammers are pretending to be the utility companies to shut off, we're going to shut off your utilities unless you pay us right now. There's always an emergency and the emergency helps them perpetrate the scam because they want people to panic and try to take care of this issue. Coble adds that scammers are becoming more creative with caller IDs. So if you receive a call from your utility company, your bank or the IRS and the person on the line is asking for money, you should always assume it's a scam. And what you should do is hang up, call the real number. Call the number on your bill. Not County Sheriff Dale Richardson says so many people fall victim to scammers because scammers have the skills to get you to reveal personal information. But you should never give out personal information to anyone over the phone or online. Never give out your social security number, your birthday, any kind of personal information with you or any family member. Helping to keep everyone safe from any threats to their security. Alyssa Williams, WYMT, Mountain News. Scammers target all demographics, not just senior citizens. There's a scam out there for everyone. Well, the Kentucky Music Hall of Fame announced its upcoming 2022 induction class yesterday. This year's class includes an Eastern Kentucky native, Pete Goble from Prestonsburg. Now, he was a bluegrass songwriting legend. Some of his well-known work includes Big Spike Hammer, Blue Virginia Blues, and This Heart of Mine. He died in 2018. Well, just had this morning, the world of sports continues to oppose the invasion of Ukraine by Russian forces. That's on the way next. It will feel more like spring this week as temperatures soar into those lower 70s. I got your full forecast coming up.